Well, we strive really hard on the show to tell some compelling stories, to cover different gear, and to also teach a lot of different techniques. But sometimes it's just the location that speaks for itself. And today we're fishing an iconic spot around Melbourne that is absolutely one of my favorites, and it needs no introduction. Perfect start to the morning. So it is just 7 a.m. now. That light has gotten up at about 20 minutes ago, and we have got absolutely perfect conditions today. Gentle northerly, which is absolutely brilliant around here. And what we're doing is we're just paddling out towards the poles. And what's great is we're starting to see some bait on the surface already. So this is a fantastic spot around summer when that water temperature is at its warmest. You just get swarms of pinkies, you get some big snapper. And obviously there's all sorts of stuff you can get around here from snook, salmon, mulloway, brim, flathead. So, but today I suspect if anything, we're probably gonna be targeting, you know, more of your pinkies along the edges of the poles with a bit of luck. And you do need a lot of luck here because it is a very hit and miss location is you might get into a snapper and that would be the absolute best case scenario and what you're gonna find is once you start tackling with this gnarly structure if you've got too much it's really really awkward so I only bring a maximum of two rods and I like to bring slightly shorter length rods when you do land a big fish the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna run straight for those poles and they're gonna try and wrap you around that structure so it's a fantastic fishing location. It's the reason why you see a lot of the big brands do all their promos for the gear and that here. If you live around Melbourne, you've got a kayak, it's a must do. But let's get stuck into some awesome fishing action and hopefully we catch some really good fish to share with you guys. Always looking at your sounder because what you'll find is once you get near the poles, you're going to start to see some big arches and packs of fish, which are most likely going to be pinkies. But we're in prime area now, so let's get out the gear and let's get casting. All right, so my weapon of choice to start the day is just going to be this. This is a two to five kilo rod. It's really multi-purpose, great for pinkies, flathead, snook, salmon, all that sort of stuff. It's also got a very, very thick butt section of backbone on this one, so it's very capable of pulling a big fish out of these poles if I had to. Now. What I am going to be doing is I've got a 1 12th of an ounce jig head that's in size 2.0 and I'm going to start by using just a 7 inch turtleback worm so that is in the nuclear chicken colour and take your time and rig them up nice and straight and then what we are going to do is we're going to cast these right in towards those structure and hopefully tempt a fish or two out. Alright, and there you go, perfect, ready to go. Let's get stuck into some fishing action. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. This is more like it. So that was right in the structure there, guys. And he's gone for a big run. The trick is, you just need to get him out of the timber and then not panic. This is a good fish. Whew. There's certainly a few hairy moments when you have like this. This is a nice fish. Yeah, it's a good pinky. Landing. There we go. 
Oh, that's why this form of fishing is so much fun. You're just casting deep into the structure. You're waiting, I had the bail arm open. All of a sudden you see that line running, flick it over, you're on. And the first thing that those fish do, it just runs that way, straight into the structure, trying to wrap you around. And that's what it's about here. It's high reward, high risk fishing. That's a pinky. And obviously you get much, much bigger fish here. But I tell you what, on that little two to five kilo rod, deep inside the poles that is so much fun and look at the colors on these fish so really really dark pink these are resonant fish they probably live here within the poles they eat off all the mussels and barnacles and all those sort of stuff but i tell you what they are very very feisty these beautiful little fish and uh, we're going to get him on his way see you matey away he goes oh 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 good timing good timing Strav is on, and I'm drifting right towards you, which is perfect. Oh, 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 has he done you on the poles? He's done you on the poles. Oh, no. Oh, he's still there. Well done. I gave up on you then. No faith. No faith. I haven't got it in the fire. <laughs> well done, matey. Well done. Oh, no, that's not a bad fish. Nice job, mate. What I've done is I've just cut that turtle back worm down a little bit, so it's still usable. Just a top centimeter or two has been off, so I just bite that off, re-rig it up, make sure it's nice and straight. That wasn't a very good cast. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. That went on a screaming run. Holy shnikes, he's going right for the pole. Come on. Come on, oh, I can feel it brushing up against the pole. Come on, out you come, out you come. Come on. I think it's wrapped around the pole. I think I've got him out. Holy moly, I tell you what. Wow. That was. Oh no! Got him! Oh, that 100% had me wrapped around the pole. So I'm definitely going to check that leader. I could feel it rubbing, and as the line was rubbing, I can feel it going on those big runs. So. Try not to panic. I'm not actually sure if I achieved that or not, but regardless, we managed to get that fish out. Lots of fun pulling that from the timber. And I tell you what, I thought for a little while there that this fish won the battle because he definitely had me wrapped against the pole and he was definitely going on big runs as that leader was just rubbing against the timber. So I might spend a minute or two in a minute, just cut off that fluorocarbon leader and put another one on. Now that is an absolutely beautiful fish. And these fish, they do fight really, really hard. Don't underestimate the pulling power of a pinky, especially on a two to five kilo rod, and especially when you're pulling them out from some pretty gnarly structure. That's a beautiful fish. We love the colors, iconic fish of Melbourne. We haven't been out here for very long. We're just pulling fish after fish after fish of this size and uh, absolutely loving things at the moment. So we're gonna get that soft plastic out of his gob and get this beautiful fish back in the water as well. All right, so let's get this beautiful fish on his way. So look at that. That is a very nice, respectable size pinky. What an awesome fish. And uh, we'll get him on his way. Oh, what a sight. Woo. Probably need to rig up a new soft plastic now. Yep, that soft plastic is demolished. So let's rig up another one. So all we're using at the moment, guys, so probably no surprise, 
We're just using the four inch turtleback worms, guys. I don't have anything to do with Berkeley or Gold. Um, I just like using them because they work. So um, if they're listening, they could probably throw some samples my way because I'm probably responsible for selling uh, thousands of these because they're sold out everywhere at the moment. But anyways, that's all I'm using, rigged on a 112th 2 slash O and just working them very, very slowly. All right, so a couple of quick pointers if you are going to fish here. As I've mentioned before, I really do like the shorter rod lengths. You're going to find that's really going to help. Helps in general on a kayak because it's a lot easier to work with. But especially in here, the longer size rods can be really awkward if you're going to go right into the timber and cast. The other thing that I find is if you're on a kayak, definitely ditch the motor. I find that having the foot pedals is a lot, lot easier. It gives you a lot more control. Again, if you want to go navigating through the poles, the other thing I'd say is just probably fish a little bit lighter than what you think. Yes, you're fishing in deep water, but you don't need to come out here and use anything like quarter of an ounce jig head. You don't need to use sort of four O's and five O's. You notice that I'm fishing very, very light. So one twelfth of an ounce, two slash O. If we were in peak snapper time, and I knew there were some bigger model fish around, then what I probably would do is bump that up to a three O, maybe a four inch soft plastic. But today, here we go, got one. Oh, look at that. <laughs> right on cue as we're talking. Look at the runs these fish go on. It's just so much fun. And that was just casting just into the edge of the poles. And I find you get a lot of fish that will just sit in that first few meters. And then once you've got them out the poles, you don't need to muscle them. If they want to run, let them run. Because your risk is obviously when they're in the poles because they're going to shred your leaders up against the timber. But once you get them out, you can just take your time, let them run. This is another really good quality fish. So we're having a awesome morning. We've been out here for about half an hour and this is four very solid fish this is another good size one and i tell you what when they see the yak they just go for another run there you go so there is another fish so we are smashing it at the moment what a morning we're having so let's have a good look at this guy he's not quite as big as that last one all right, so there is that soft plastic, 1 12th of an ounce. And you will notice that these get chewed up really, really in between bites. So what you either have to do is replace that soft plastic or cut it down a little bit and re-rig it up. And you also wanna check your leaders because you're gonna find when these fish go on that first run, sometimes your leader will actually brush up against those timber poles. And because of that, it means that you're compromising potentially your next catch. But anyway, there is another beautiful little fish and um, Geez, we're having fun at the moment. That's two or three fish and two or three casts. There is another one. So see you, matey. We'll get you on your way. He swims away. That's another. Let's go get more. What is here? Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, this is a good fish. Get away from those poles. Damn it, get away. I'm gonna chuck this in reverse. There we go, I think I've got him out. Holy crap. This is a good fish. Oh, I keep drifting back and towards the poles and he's not letting up. <laughs> I take some, he takes some. Reverse it a bit more. Oh yeah, this is a good one. I can see it, this color. Watch that net. Yes. <laughs> there you go, look at that. Yeah. 
here we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that was a good hit. <laughs> I love this form of fishing. Just drag him away from those poles. There we go, got him under control now. He's still trying to run that way. He feels very similar to the size of the last one, so definitely a pinky with those little head shakes. Yeah, that's another good fish. <laughs> oh, I love fishing around here, Port Melbourne amongst the poles. If you own a kayak, it's definitely a spot you want to come and tangle with because it is so much fun and it will really test you in terms of your casting, your ability to play fish, bring them out of the structure. And I'll tell you what, the rewards are some beautiful, beautiful pinkies like that. So I'm thrilled with that. And uh, I'm gonna get this beautiful fish on his way and get stuck into a few more. exciting i can guarantee now my braid and my fluorocarbon leader is going to be absolutely shredded but we still managed to keep that fish you can see that one there is taken on that fat hollow sandworm so just mixing it up because i went through a whole packet of those turtlebacks because and that is a beautiful pinky there and i'll tell you what that really had me done and dusted and i can feel that leader is just absolutely shredded so i reckon we might spend a minute or two and just rig another one up but geez it's been fun out here they've only been fishing probably for about 90 minutes we've caught a lot a lot of fish we've also dropped a lot of fish and uh, we're probably going to call it in pretty soon and this has been just a remarkable session all right and there you go look at that what a beautiful fish that is another port melbourne princess pier special and that is a stunning catch and we're going to let this beautiful fish go on three two one see you matey and away he swims. Oh, here we go. Oh, come on. Rub it up against the pole. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He's dragging me in. <laughs> He's dragging me in. See if I can outmuscle him with a tiny bit of reverse. Oh, he's going right for that pole. I can see him. There we go. He's coming up now. There we go. Nice pinky. Whoops. <laughs> it's not that big. Ah, they're in deep at the moment. Perfect. All right. Oh, I got you. Oh, that was huge hit. That was the biggest strike today. Wow. That hammer that Travis is on. Wow, I don't think it's that big. It just hit it hard. Oh, it's a nice fish, but... 
<laughs> oh, that was ridiculous. I mean, look, we're only talking a pinky like this, but it almost ripped the rod out of my hands. It's horses for courses, guys. We're using sort of two to four, two to five kilo rods. We're not out here with big, heavy gear and heavy line and leader. It's about making it a really enjoyable sport. So I'm just sort of getting myself around one of these poles here, but that's another fish. And the good thing is, we're just catching plenty, which just makes the whole experience lots and lots of fun. You want to come out, you want to catch fish. And all I'm using at the moment is just that. Fat hollow sandworm rigged on a 1 12th of an ounce jig head, size 2 O. Alrighty, and there we go. See ya, buddy. <laughs> He's just splashed the hell out of me. <laughs> Wow, that was absolutely awesome. It was a short session, but it was action packed. And I love mornings like that. You come out just after first light, really still conditions, and pretty much from start to finish, it is just non-stop fishing action. But this is an awesome spot to be fishing. If you're into kayak fishing and you live around Melbourne, that's something that you really got to do because it's a great experience to be fishing where you have to actually cast something, where you've got to control the fish, where you got to do all the effort to pull it out. And I'll tell you what, it's a lot, a lot of fun and absolutely one of my favorite kayak fishing spots locally. Anyway, guys, I hope that you've enjoyed the episode and I look forward to seeing you sometime soon. Take care, everyone. If you enjoyed the episode, then become a Fishing Mad member. It's easy to join by visiting www.fishingmad.com.au forward slash member and gain access to an online portal that's full of helpful fishing content, including detailed workshops, fishing reports, rigging tutorials, podcasts, giveaways, competitions, maps, gear reviews, sounder training, exclusive videos, and much more. It's a great platform and helps to support everything we do at Fishing Mad, so become a member today.